One of these is Crumble, the other one is Betty Crocker. I was about to say that this is a conspiracy theory, but this has kind of become bigger than that. In my opinion, Crumble Cookies is one of the biggest food industry mysteries that I've ever come across. At least to me, it feels like overnight this bakery that only does cookies is kind of taken over the world. For the past few years, it felt like I could not escape the crumble cookies. Recently, there's been videos circulating mostly on TikTok of like a behind the scenes of allegedly the crumble cookies kitchen. So a lot of people think that the crumble cookies are just Betty Crocker cookies dressed up to look fancy. It's possible, but we need to test out whether it's actually possible. So these cookies just arrived today. They're very fresh. I basically ordered four different types of crumble cookies. These look incredible, but most importantly, we are going to test out whether you can make these cookies using Betty Crocker cookie mixes. This video is basically a scientific test, a journalistic investigation, but most importantly, this is me enjoying cookies. Is it possible that this is a Betty Crocker cookie? Everything in this video is allegedly, everything in this video, it's my opinion. In my opinion, it's entirely possible. These smell like Betty Crocker cookies. This is our very first crumble cookie that we're gonna recreate using the Betty Crocker mix. And this is the chocolate chip cookie, which I think is like their most popular one. It is known for a toasty brown sugar flavor, which I think we're going to be able to accomplish. Fingers crossed. Just imagine if this works, just for a second. So this is the standard chocolate chip mix from Betty Crocker, and in the instructions, it says you need one stick of butter and one egg, except we're gonna make a few changes because obviously this tastes great, but it doesn't taste like a toasty, homemade kind of cookie, which is what we want to accomplish. So according to the instructions, you're supposed to use one stick of butter, which is the amount of butter that we're gonna use, except we're gonna divide this stick of butter into two and you'll understand why. In order to incorporate like this buttery toasty flavor, we're going to brown the butter, just half of it, so it doesn't mess with the consistency too much. We're gonna cook this until the butter is like bubbling, kind of like caramelly, but not black, a medium brown caramel color. Browning butter is a little bit dangerous because this goes black very, very quickly. I don't want to go too high with the temperature because I know that's always a mistake. Not me deglazing yesterday's leftovers. So the butter is completely melted and this is the part where it gets kind of scary. These dark bits come really, really quickly. It sounds like it's getting there. It smells like it's getting there too quickly. It's at the stage where it's really foamy. Any moment now. If you've never smelled brown butter, it's the ingredient that makes every incredible cookie taste the way it tastes. Oh, that smells incredible. Oh, I think it's happening. And I think we got there. See, this is the problem. Ugh. Don't get too brown. Okay, it's getting real brown. Cooking panic? Well, I take this very seriously. So this right here is the brown butter. This is gonna be what makes it taste like the crumble cookies. So do you see all these dark like brown bits? That is basically all the flavor. Don't get rid of the toasty bits because that is exactly what we need. It smells like liquid Verter's Originals. You can kind of see like the burned bits of the butter, that is all flavor that we want. So now that this is cooled down a little bit, you can kind of see how it's like a deep brown color. That is exactly what we're looking for. I've read so many blog posts about these crumble cookies, conspiracy theories. I went to the dark web at some point for this. One thing that everyone agreed was that crumble cookies actually adds more sugar to the Betty Crocker cookie mix, specifically brown sugar. This is like very important. So I am going to add one tablespoon of brown sugar. Make sure it's like a good full tablespoon. And this is light brown sugar specifically, two tablespoons in total. Another ingredient that everyone seems to agree that needs to be added to the mix is some extra vanilla flavor flavoring because I'm sure the mix already has some vanilla flavoring, but we're gonna add an extra teaspoon of vanilla. So one extra teaspoon of vanilla and we can finally add the remaining of the butter. So this is just half a stick. So we're gonna put that in there. So the butter should ideally be softened for this. Mine is not ideal. We're gonna combine the whole thing with an electric mixer.
If you guys could smell this right now, this literally smells like candy, like caramel toffee candy. It's incredible. Essentially, what we've created is kind of like a deeply flavored butter that is going to be the base of the cookie. So it's not a huge difference, but it's a huge difference at the same time. Finally, we're gonna add one egg and all the eggshell, preferably. So just exactly the same as it says in the back of the package. And we're gonna combine once again. It's really important that from this moment on, we don't wanna overmix anything. You wanna be very gentle, kind of fold things in, make sure that it's smooth. Don't use the electric mixer if possible. Finally, we're gonna add the Betty Crocker mix. If this turns out to be the same, I would be so impressed. And according to my research, you also wanna add one extra tablespoon of just white flour. And this is in order for the cookies not to spread out too much. So just one extra tablespoon of flour. If this works, this is the crumble cookie mix. So we're gonna combine the whole thing and let's see where this takes us. So far it seems very dry, but I'm sure it will get there. Okay, it's kind of coming together. It is moisturized. It is living its best life. So this is kind of where we're at with the dough. It's a very standard cookie dough. Like it feels nice, but the smell of it, it smells homemade because of the brown butter step. If you look at the crumble chocolate chip cookie, you will realize that actually, the chocolate chips not only are slightly bigger, it seems like there's more chocolate chips than in this dough. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add one third of a cup of chocolate chips. So you wanna add half of the chocolate chips now, about this amount, and we're gonna save these to decorate on top before we bake it. Obviously the look of the cookie, it's really important. We want it to look exactly the same. So these are just milk chocolate chips. I'm gonna use my hands for this because it's just easier at this point. So one thing that will be interesting is to see how many crumble cookies we're gonna get out of this because they are pretty big. They're also expensive, so I'm sure they're making a profit. I'm not worried for their business. I'm more worried for my grocery bill after this video. As soon as you add the bigger chocolate chips, this starts to look like it's going to become the crumble cookie. Even the color of the dough because of the brown butter and the brown sugar, it kind of looks like trying to avoid cross-contamination here but I can kind of see this working. So we'll see. So we're gonna put this in the fridge for at least 30 minutes, but ideally you wanna leave it in the fridge for a couple of hours. This is really important. If you don't do this step, it's not going to look like that. If we bake the cookies as it is, it's going to melt too quickly because of the brown butter and everything else. We wanna cool this down. This is really, really important. So this is the classic chocolate chip cookie dough and it's been in the fridge for a while. So it's definitely chilled. It might be too chilled. Never had that issue personally. This is really stuck. <laughs> Did not expect that. Okay, um, so there is a limit of chillness. After a lot of research, a lot of controversial opinions, people fighting as if this is a matter of life or death, I think I found the amount that they use at Crumble, and I think it's one third of a cup, which it's a lot for a cookie, but it's a big cookie, but it's still a lot. So this is the official amount, one third of a cup. Maybe don't chill the dough as much as I did. So one third is a lot. It's like a very full one third of a cup. Now I'm never gonna get it out of here. This dough that I've made is so dense. It was really positive up to now. The size seems about right. That seems exactly how much dough I expected in order to become like a giant cookie. And the texture of it, it kind of is doing like that cakey kind of texture from the crumble cookie. I'm only gonna cook two different cookies at the same time because I'm not playing any games. I know these are going to expand in unpredictable ways. <laughs> <laughs> also me when I go to an all-you-can-eat buffet. So I'm only gonna do two and I'm gonna do another one-third of a cup. I'm just gonna press it in. One box only will give you five cookies, four to five cookies. That is interesting. So I'm gonna leave this one taller, like a perfect circle, and this one I'm gonna flatten it down just a little bit because I don't know exactly what to expect. So we left some of the milk chocolate chips to decorate on top, so I'm just gonna place Maybe like three on top. I'm not gonna do it in a very obvious way. I'm gonna try to like casually place it. I think that'll be good. These feel like they're going to become a crumble cookie. Like I could be wrong, but they feel solid and sturdy. So I'm gonna do the same on this one, even though this one is basically just a ball. And one more here. 
There's only four cookies. <laughs> Look at the thickness from the side and then from the top. I just think this is gonna work. And this one is just a circle. So in case these melt too quickly in the oven, I'm just going to leave this one a little bit taller. Something will work out. Surprisingly, I am going to bake this according to the box instructions because to me that seems like the most safe thing to do. If anything changes, if it's quicker or slower, I will let you know. This will bake at 350 Fahrenheit. It says on here for 17 to 19 minutes. I'm guessing more towards the 25, but I will let you know. I'm gonna have to choose my words very wisely for this. This is the crumble cookie. This is the original one. This is the one that we purchased from the bakery. It looks pretty incredible. It looks nothing like a Betty Crocker cookie. So if we manage to make Betty Crocker cookie mix into anything that remotely resembles this, I would consider that a success. This is what our cookie looks like. <laughs> I need to do a side by side. It's not a 100% match, but it's pretty similar. They feel similar in heaviness. The texture of the actual cookie feels very, very similar. I would even argue that mine, the one that I made, looks more like the crumble cookies from the website than the one that they sent me. Either way, I find them very, very similar. I don't know if I'm delusional if I spend too long doing this. I don't know. This is pretty similar. I'm not gonna lie. I am. I think mine has a little bit too many chocolate chips and I also cooked it for a little bit too long, potentially. For full transparency, this is the first cookie that I baked and I just baked it for a little bit too long And then I looked at the crumble cookie and I was like it needs to be cooked a little bit less So this was around 25 minutes of cooking and honestly like this is Betty Crocker This is a Betty Crocker cookie. It looks like a crumble cookie, right? Allegedly no, it's not allegedly it does look like it if you could see my legs right now my legs are shaking that's how scared I am that they're gonna take me to court. I don't know, uh, it's pretty similar. <laughs> In my opinion, these definitely look like cookies from the same batch, which is what I was trying to do. Wait, I keep on forgetting which one is which. That's, that's when you know. My cookies have fully cooled down at room temperature for a couple of hours, so this is like perfect to make the comparison. Like, these are not freshly cooked. So this is the crumble cookie. This is kind of what I want from the one that I made. I want it to be like like super super soft very like chewy kind of like dense that is the signature crumble cookie and this is the one that i made which looks pretty damn similar i hope this doesn't disappoint <laughs> i don't even know what to say it's the same cookie on the inside it looks even more similar right Am I crazy? I don't think I'm crazy. Okay, let me put them side by side so you guys see the inside of the cookies. I bet you guys can't even tell which one is which. Even if you're Crumble's biggest fan, I would honestly, I would be really surprised if you can tell me which one of these is the Crumble cookie. The texture and everything, it's pretty spot on. Just to remind you that this is made with Betty Crocker cookie mix. If you've ever made a Betty Crocker cookie, you know it doesn't look like this. But does it taste like this? Wow, I keep forgetting which one is which. Interesting. Crumble cookie, Betty Crocker. It's a great cookie. It's probably the best selling cookie of all time for a reason. There's definitely some brown sugar, brown butter. There's something like that in here. Milky is really good. So much flavor without being overly sweet, which I think is what makes crumble cookies some of the best cookies. Now, this is really, I don't know if we're gonna get that from this one. You get that from this one. <laughs> that is incredible. Wow. It's super milky. You really get the added chocolate chips, like the milk chocolate chips. It makes all the difference. It still tastes super cozy, super toasty. The actual dough of the cookie. Like, I don't want to say it, but I want to say it. But the actual dough of the cookie. I don't even know how to say this, but if I was blindfolded and you gave me this cookie dough and that cookie dough, I would not be able to tell the difference. And that is my 
Honest opinion, the only difference that I get here is that this one tastes fresher because we just made it So it obviously tastes fresher. It tastes fresher than the crumble cookie But I bet if I leave this out for another day, it's gonna be the same. I'm getting itchy I'm nervous about putting this information into the world. This is just my opinion This is just my unique experience in my kitchen attempting to do this. It's pretty mind-blowing Both incredible this one just tastes fresher, but the dough <laughs> I have no words. The fact that this is a Betty Crocker cookie, I would never believe if you told me. It's like an expensive bakery cookie. We did that. This just got very promising for the rest of the video. This is a crumble Snickers cookie. And as you can see, it is more of a challenge to recreate this. However, and this is just my opinion, and it's all what I think, don't take anything I say as a fact, the smell of this cookie is exactly the same as the smell of the Betty Crocker peanut butter cookie. It is exactly the same, in my opinion. I'm not saying that it's the same, I'm not saying that it isn't. <laughs> trying to stay away from drama while being the drama. On the website, this is actually described as a peanut butter cookie topped with the icing, the chocolate, and Snickers pieces. The actual base is only described as a peanut butter cookie, which is one of the flavors that Betty Crocker does. I could be wrong, but I do think this is, yeah, I think this is it. So we're gonna test it out. We're gonna make a few replacements to the Betty Crocker peanut butter cookie mix. The recipe on the back asks for three tablespoons of vegetable oil, one tablespoon of water, and one egg. We're not gonna quite follow this. From everything that I've read, Crumble does not use vegetable oil for their cookies. Instead, we're gonna add three tablespoons of butter. So this is just softened butter, and it's kind of already measured on here, so I'm gonna do three tablespoons. I'm guessing you could melt this, but I think this will be perfect because it's quite soft already. To this, I'm gonna add one tablespoon of brown sugar. This is just light brown sugar. This time around, just one tablespoon. And once again, even though this is peanut butter flavor, vanilla extract always makes it taste like homemade, higher quality. So we're doing one teaspoon of vanilla extract. I could be wrong here, but I think I'm right. Even though this is very little, we wanna combine this just so that it doesn't change the texture too much. So I'm gonna add one egg, just exactly the same as Betty Crocker asks for. Every time you read one tablespoon of water on a Betty Crocker mix, we're going to replace it with milk. If you look at the ingredients of bakery cookies, they always add milk. You always wanna add flavor where you can. I'm gonna combine this again. As you probably guessed, this is a peanut butter cookie. So we really want the peanut butter flavor to come through, but we're only adding one tablespoon of peanut butter. And this is because Betty Crocker actually does a great job with the peanut butter flavor, but this is just gonna make it taste more realistic. It's going to confuse our five senses. Two senses, visually and the smell and the flavor, all senses, anyways. And because we added the peanut butter, we're also gonna add one tablespoon of flour just to make up for the texture so that it still amounts to a thick cookie. We're just gonna combine this. And this is basically an extra flavor base. So now we're just gonna add the actual mix and the flavor, the color. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. I'm not gonna over mix this. I'm just gonna be very, very gentle just until this sort of comes together. This is like the most intense cookie dough flavor. And I know it seems kind of dry, but I promise you once we mix this, you will see this will become cookie dough. This literally looks homemade. So I'm just going to combine the whole thing. Like it just looks like a great like cookie dough. It smells exactly the same. And it's not even baked yet. So as soon as this bakes, this is going to be incredible. So needless to say, this has to go in the fridge because you know why at this point, it is the only way for this to become like a thick cookie and not melt. So this is our refrigerated peanut butter dough and it's very smooth. I'm kind of scared because it's towards the liquidy side and I hope it's not because of the peanut butter that we added, but it is entirely possible. But the cookie was very smooth, so it might be. Once again, I'm using one third of a cup, the official crumble amount, and I'm gonna just 
press it in here. I think this one will spread a lot, so I'm gonna be mindful of that. Because I think this one is going to grow a lot, I'm gonna leave it very tall, but I do want the cookie to be smooth because this one, it's meant to be a lot smoother. Maybe the texture actually makes sense. This one is so much easier to work with. Once again, we're gonna roll it out. I want this to be super smooth. I don't wanna see a single wrinkle in this dough. And this is basically it. I'm gonna bake them exactly the same because I do think these are gonna spread out. They might spread out too much. That is my fear. I can see it happening. I'm subconsciously manifesting a failure. No, not on my watch. Oh. Okay, great. I was just trying to show you. <laughs> I'm baking these according to the temperature on the Betty Crocker instructions, but obviously it's going to take longer because these are a lot bigger. I don't know, I'm guessing 25 minutes seems like a lot, but it's possible. These are big, big cookies. 30 minutes even. I don't know. We'll see. You gotta stay around and check when it's ready. There's no science here. So here we've got our peanut butter Betty Crocker cookie that doesn't look like a Betty Crocker cookie anymore. Even the back is very satisfying to look at. I mean... This is the crumble cookie and obviously I don't know what the cookie looks like underneath because you don't see much of it. From the little that I can see, it looks like it's exactly this. Even the proportions of the cookie. Mom can pick me up, I am scared, I truly am. And this feels like an expensive bakery cookie. This doesn't feel like Betty Crocker. No offense, Betty Crocker. I have a theory, and this is just my personal theory, on how they make the frosting on top of the crumble cookies. It's not exactly icing, it's also not frosting, because it's kind of like solid. I think it's entirely possible that what they do is use the Betty Crocker vanilla frosting and just put it in the microwave. Because if you put vanilla frosting in the microwave, it kind of becomes icing. It's really weird, but we're gonna do it. So, looking at the texture, that looks like melted frosting. This doesn't have to go in the microwave for too long. I think it's literally a few seconds will be enough. I just want you to look at it. Like, this is just traditional frosting. It's pretty solid. Like, you know, it's as solid as frosting gets. And this is like the Betty Crocker, the cheapest one you can buy at the supermarket, I think. And we're gonna put this in the microwave. I'm guessing 10 seconds, check. 10 seconds, check. So this took a total of 40 seconds and I just wanna show you that this is basically icing. And it looks really similar. Wait, cause I have to show you this. Cause no one's gonna believe me. Look at the color of the icing on here. Do you see the color of the icing? And now look at the color of the icing from Betty Crocker. I'm not saying anything. I literally said nothing. I'm gonna try to do the same thing as the actual cookie. So we're gonna, is this too liquidy? As it cools down, it becomes a little bit thicker, which will be easier because we don't want this to fall off the cookie. So I'm gonna try to do it kind of like how they did it on the other cookie. They actually use quite a lot of it and they kind of let it run off the cookie. So I'm gonna put quite a lot here in the center and then kind of like, yeah, that's kind of what we want. Maybe a little bit more even. Maybe around here. Oh, that was a lot. Okay, now that was a lot. It looks similar, but I don't want to touch it. Okay, I'm just gonna... I mean, I'm only gonna find out once we see how this is gonna cool down in the fridge. So next up, I'm gonna basically chop some Snickers bars. That's kind of what they've done on the original cookie. I think they used actual Snickers because they paid for the trademark, so... Maybe you need like half a bar per cookie. It does not have to be perfect. Maybe I'm gonna cut this in half. I don't know I'm gonna do it, but I will do it. Wait, I think this is more like it. This is pretty satisfying. Yep, that's what we want. So I just need to make this a little bit messier. Trust me, I know how to do that. <laughs> I know how to do just that. Okay, without letting the cookie slide. Oh, this is not a good idea. So to the cookie, I'm just gonna add, oh my God, this is looking so similar already. I'm just gonna add the pieces of Snickers. They actually do it in a very messy way. So I'm gonna try to break it even more. Okay, they go quite heavy on the toppings. I feel like I should stop, but this is too satisfying for me to stop. <laughs> okay, just a little bit of dust. That looks very similar. I just hope that he sticks to the, to the frosting. And that is pretty perfect. That's too perfect. Okay, something's gotta go wrong. One thing I've noticed, and I didn't read this anywhere, I just looked at the cookie. The cookie actually has a few pieces of 
just peanuts. I'm gonna do just a little bit of peanuts on top as well. These are crushed peanuts. I crushed them myself. I don't think this adds a whole lot more flavor because it already has peanuts inside the Snickers, but we're doing it. Wow. <laughs> This looks really similar. The size, the decoration, it's getting real. The last step is to drizzle a little bit of milk chocolate on top. So I've got some milk chocolate chips. I don't think it matters which brand, as long as it's milk chocolate. So I'm gonna put this in the microwave for 30 seconds. I honestly don't know, we'll see. So here's our melted or almost melted chocolate chips. Just need to stir it a little bit and it will get there. Hopefully. So this is the part that stresses me out because we got to make those little stripes. Let me see how good I am in making. Oh, not very good. This is a problem. Okay, that's easier. Okay, got it. Okay, here goes nothing. Oh. Was that successful? It wasn't perfect, but I think it does the job. Okay, so the tray looks like a complete mess, but I... I have faith. I think we got there in the end. I'm gonna wait for the chocolate to cool down because otherwise I can't even touch this. I'm looking at it and I cannot wait for you to look at it because we've done something. We officially have done something. <laughs> we have never been able to replicate something, visually at least, to this level. <laughs> it's the same. It's the same cookie! So in first place, this is the crumble cookie. This is the very expensive cookie that I purchased from Crumble. It's the snickerdoodle cookie. It's a peanut butter cookie with this with Snickers and a vanilla glaze on top. This, this is Betty Crocker. <laughs> no, cause I don't think you guys understand. One of these is crumble, the other one is Betty Crocker, made by me, which is even worse. Down to the way the frosting, the icing, whatever you want to call it, sticks to the cookies, the little pieces, the tiny bits of peanuts, the chocolate drizzle. This is like the same cookie, and the cookie, the actual cookie, it feels very, very similar. Play deep conspiracy music. We're gonna break them because sometimes things visually look the same, but it doesn't always mean that they will taste the same. I also just wanna say, I slay the decoration on this. Crumble is looking kind of pedestrian in comparison. Even though it looks very similar, just better. Thank you for the applause. So the cookie does feel very similar. So this is the crumble cookie. It is soft. It's just the classic crumble cookie. So this is kind of the texture on the inside. It's very dense. I do think there's actual peanut butter in it, which is kind of what we've done as well. So hopefully ours is going to be similar. Ours does feel a little bit bigger. Oh, it's just the same amount of chewy. And this is what ours looks on the inside. I don't even know what possessed me when I made these. The Holy Spirit, the spirit of Betty Crocker. Someone possessed me because I've never been able to do this. Maybe it's the fact that this is a pre-made mix. Both of them, maybe, allegedly. I don't even know which one is which. Okay, mine is a little more orange. I think the only difference in these is that I cooked mine a little bit longer, which results in a deeper color. This one feels a little bit softer than mine. They even smell exactly the same. So let's give it a try. This is the crumble cookie. Very good, very chewy. It's super soft. This one is very, Underbaked. I think I should have underbaked mine a little bit, but it's good. So this is mine. Mine is slightly crispy just around the edge. So the cooking is not exactly the same. However, the flavor is the same, in my opinion, just 100% the same. The only thing that's different about this, I should have cooked mine two minutes less, maybe like 22, 23 minutes. That would have been perfect, but the flavor of it, the texture in the center part, I don't know. Maybe I don't know cookies. That could be the explanation to this. Maybe I'm not an expert in cookies, which I think I am. <laughs> I've got the credentials. But this is the same cookie. I mean, they look the same. I don't even know what to tell you guys. Just look at it. Look at the plate. I'm gonna force you guys to look at it. I'm gonna ruin the cookies. Look at the damn cookies. They're the same. I'm fighting haters that don't even exist yet. <laughs> That's what goes on in my head most of the time. The plot thickens. 
I don't want to go to jail. So this is the Crumble Chips Ahoy Frosted Cookie. It looks good. It looks real good. But if you look at the back of it, it's not exactly the same as the regular chocolate chip cookie. This one's a lot smoother. This one doesn't look as homemade as the original chocolate chip cookie. It also doesn't have milk chocolate chips. It actually only has semi-sweet chocolate chips, which is exactly the same as they use in the Betty Crocker mix. So I think it's a lot closer to the original. It is now. <laughs> So this is the Betty Crocker, you know, the standard chocolate chip and according to the instructions you need one stick of butter and one egg. We're gonna do one stick of butter and it's softened as usual. Small earthquake. We always add some extra vanilla because you can never go wrong with that. So one teaspoon of vanilla extract. You might need two teaspoons if yours is really weak, but this is of extra strength. And to this I'm gonna add two tablespoons of light brown sugar. And this is mostly for the flavor, it's nothing to do with the texture, it's just brown sugar tricks you into thinking that your grandma made the cookies. So we're gonna combine this until it's smooth. I'm gonna add one egg which is the standard recipe, nothing new here. Mix. Okay. And we're adding one tablespoon of just regular white flour. This is just for texture. And to this, we're gonna add the actual Betty Crocker mix. And one quarter of a cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips. It's not as much as in the other one because this one doesn't have as many chocolate chips. I'm pretty sure. And you can just put the whole thing. There's no need for decoration with this one because we're gonna frost the whole cookie. I'm trying to be gentle and not overmix this, but I should probably be doing this with a spoon. You can kind of see already, but this one, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be lighter than the other one because it doesn't have as much brown sugar, brown butter, and I'm hoping they will also be smoother. The baked cookie looks pretty smooth, almost looks artificial. This one you almost want it to not look homemade and only one type of chocolate chips all throughout. Yep, I think that's kind of what we're getting. Not as many chocolate chips, a whole lot smoother. I'm looking at the crumble one and I'm trying to imagine what it looked like when it was a cookie dough. And I'm imagining this. Maybe this will fail and I'm a clown and this is just a waste of dough and my, my energy. I just want to smooth everything out before we refrigerate it because once it's in the fridge, it's gonna be a lot more difficult to move this. But overall, this is a pretty smooth dough. Just gonna put this in the fridge and hope that it's going to look like the Chips Ahoy cookie. But this one might be the smoothest of the doughs, even after chilling, it's still pretty smooth. So I feel like at this point, I can guess one third of a cup with the power of my brain. So once again, one third of a cup, just to be safe. Oh, this one doesn't even stick, pretty incredible. That will be one third of a cup. Perfect. I think I guessed this one pretty damn well. Me when I'm the second child. I want these to be super smooth. That is the whole point of these ones because they almost looked artificial, the ones from Crumbles. Just gonna smooth them out a lot, really press it in. Maybe a tiny little bit more, it seems smaller. I think these will work best in like a little ball, like a perfect sphere. These are oddly smooth. I mean, both of them, very, very smooth. So I think it's going to look similar. Just don't want them to be too flat. <sighs> Fingers crossed, once again, I'm gonna bake these for the 350, 75, I can't remember, but I'll tell you how it goes. Here goes nothing. So here we've got the baked cookie. I actually baked three of them and this was the most round one. This one is definitely the least impressive out of all the cookies that we baked. It very much looks like a standard Betty Crocker cookie because it practically is. We didn't make that many changes to the recipes. It looks delicious, but pretty standard. So this is a cookie from Crumble, and if you look at it, it's also pretty much just a cookie. So for this one, it comes down to the decoration of it. On the official Crumble website, the frosting on top of the cookie is described as a vanilla frosting with a hint of blue. I shouldn't be telling you this, but I'm gonna say it anyways. I met someone once who owns a bakery and this person basically told me that one of the biggest like secrets of bakeries is that a lot of the times the frosting 
is from the supermarket. What they do to it to make it look homemade, to trick people into thinking they're having homemade frosting is they will add a little bit, just a tiny drop of blue food coloring until the frosting goes white. And that white frosting makes you think that it's different than the yellow, slightly yellow from the supermarket. This is a conspiracy theory inside a conspiracy theory. I know it's true for some bakeries, for that bakery specifically. So I wouldn't be surprised that some bakeries make the frosting for the cookies straight from a can, Betty Crocker vanilla frosting, just with food coloring added to it. I mean, I'm not saying that it's the truth, but it could be. I also took a closer look at the cookie and the frosting is a little bit fluffier. So I do think they whip it with the electric mixer a little bit in order to get that consistency. And this one is very dense. You know, the one from the supermarket, it's very compact. So we're gonna make this into the other one. Enough. Now the difficult part will be to transform this into the color of the crumble one because I'm colorblind. Even though I can see blue, so I think you'll be fine. I'm gonna use this as a reference. I'm gonna start with just a tiny little bit of me trying to open my bubble tea. I'm gonna start with just a tiny little drop and then we'll see where this goes. You see, that was too much already. Wait, maybe not. It needs more for sure. This is kind of like a green. See, this is why you should never trust a colorblind person in general in life, especially me. Let's do a tiny little bit more. Oh man, this is a dangerous game that I'm playing because I don't have more frosting. Now it might be too blue. It's definitely changing color. I don't even know if on camera this is going to look white. I think that's an exact match in color, right? Maybe a tiny little bit more blue? Nah, I feel like this is pretty good. That's a pretty good color match, right? Me, when I go buy BB cream, I'm gonna mix this a little bit better. Wait, the texture of it? That's exactly what I was looking for. It's just slightly more whipped than it is straight out of the package. Wait, should you have a tiny little bit more blue? Maybe just a tiny little bit. Here, let me see what I can do. I'm just literally gonna touch it for a second. Oh, that's it. That's it. This will literally make no difference, but it'll make me feel better. I'm gonna put the frosting just in a piping bag, but I'm sure you'll be fine if we just spread this directly on the cookie. I just don't have that kind of talent in me. So I'm just putting the frosting. It's looking white on camera now. Honestly, even that one is starting to look white. This is definitely nerve wracking. This does look like homemade frosting. I cannot believe this is just Betty Crocker. They don't use a whole lot of frosting, so I'm not gonna go too crazy. I feel like that'll be pretty good. I'm just gonna go in the center a little bit. I'm sure this is a pointless use of the piping bag, but there was no other way I could do this. For this part, I'm gonna use the back of a spoon. Theirs actually doesn't look too perfect anyways. And I'm just gonna attempt to smooth this out a little bit. I don't have a spatula, do I? Maybe. Probably some storage unit in Ohio. For the first time in my life, I abstain from commenting. I knew frosting was gonna be my weakness, me when I go to a birthday party. I really want to use my fingers for this. I'm sure this is not what they do at Crumble, imagine. That explains the salty sweet flavor. That's kind of starting to look similar and I will give you like a full detailed close-up But we gotta carry on with the decoration for this one. The frosting was definitely the most difficult part of the decoration So I'm glad that's over. It looks similar ish. So obviously this is a Chips Ahoy flavored cookie So all the decoration we're gonna do it using official Chips Ahoy products. I'm gonna grab four. I don't even need four, but I will just, I will snort it. <laughs> I'm gonna grab four of the original size Chips Ahoy cookies and I'm gonna put it in a Ziploc bag. I think I can probably do this with my hands. We're just going to crush it. And this should be enough. Alternatively, you could also use like a, a hammer. Might be too much. Against the window. Don't try this at home, unless you don't have windows and you live in a bunker. Then I'm sure you have other problems. I'm looking at the original crumble cookie and the Chips Ahoy dust is very, very thin. So I'm gonna try to make it as thin as possible. So I'm gonna grab some of the dust and we're going to cover 
the frosting on the cookie. So we should stick to it, which is... Wait, that looks exactly the same. Okay, so we know that we've done this correctly. But this is the same cookie. This is also as fun as decorating cookies will ever get. Like, this is actually fun. Oh, they used a whole lot. And I'm gonna press into it a little bit because I do want it to stick to the frosting. That is oddly similar. On the original cookie, there's a miniature cookie on top of the cookie. I thought that it would be one of these miniature chips ahoy, but I think my miniature cookie is too miniature, but I'm still gonna use it. I mean, it is what it is. This is what I've got to work with. So I'm gonna use maybe two of them. These are the only miniature chips ahoy that I could find at the supermarket, but if you can find bigger ones, use a bigger one. So we're gonna place the cookies on top of the cookie. It's pretty cute. <laughs> It's very cute. And the cookie, even though it kind of looked like a standard Betty Crocker cookie before, it looks pretty legit now. Like, it looks incredible. It does not look like Betty Crocker anymore. The only way that you'd be able to tell the difference between these cookies is literally by the size of the cookie on top. Turns out the size does matter in this particular scenario. So this is the crumble cookie. So we've got the chocolate chip base, the slightly blue frosting, and then sprinkled chips ahoy, and a miniature chips ahoy on top, which by the way, I don't even know what kind of cookie this is because I could not find this size at the supermarket. And this is the cookie that we've made. Let's address the elephant in the room or not the elephant in the room, which is the fact that our cookie on top is a whole lot smaller. That is the smallest cookie that I could find. I just wanna know if it actually tastes the same. So I'm gonna deconstruct the crumble cookie and this is kind of the texture that you get from it. Very, very soft. I would say it's drier and maybe cakier than their standard chocolate chip cookie. It is definitely different. This one doesn't have milk chocolate chips. It's only semi-sweet chocolate chips, which is kind of what we try to recreate. So this is mine one, um, a lot smaller, but it's the thought that counts. I mean, it looks kind of similar as well, and it feels similar. So let's see if ours is as soft. Okay, that was pretty soft as well. The texture... <laughs> That's really close. My frosting is melting a little bit. But keep in mind, like the texture of the cookie, it's very cakey-like as well. Mine might be slightly overcooked, just a tiny little bit in the bottom. I think I could have used a little bit more dough. So this is the original. It is super soft. Wait, I want some of the frosting because I want to know if this is the right frosting. Incredible. This is really good. I love the flavor of the frosting. It's good. And this is the one that we made, which is slightly crispy around the edges. So two less minutes and it would have been perfect, probably. The frosting, not exactly the same. The one from Crumble is better. I think it's got milk and vanilla added to it. So I would have done that differently. I would have mixed a little bit of milk and vanilla, but that is it. The cookie, I mean, try it. Buy one of these, make one of these, and just try it for yourself. It's just, in my opinion, the same. Even the chocolate chips taste the same, especially the chocolate chips. That's it, literally. I've said this so many times, but the looks don't lie. In general, I think I would have baked every single cookie that I've made in this video, maybe two minutes less. That is the only thing because the center tastes exactly the same, but my edges are a little bit crispier because that is my preference. I don't even know what to say. I came here with a mission. I did not think that I was gonna accomplish the mission, but I've accomplished the mission and now I'm speechless. Crumble cookies, incredible. Betty Crocker cookies, you know, straight out of the box with the instructions, they're good as well. We definitely took them to the next level in this video. It was very, very similar. I'm not saying that this is like a conspiracy theory, even though there is visual evidence. But I'm not saying that. That's not my place to say that. All I'm saying is if you do this, if you follow these recipes that we tested in this video, I am very confident that you will not be disappointed that 90% of you, 95% of you would not be able to tell the difference. That is my opinion. It's up to you guys whether you want to try it or not. Please let me know. Here's the thing, I don't want to get in trouble, but also I don't want to lie to you guys. And this is just 
A matter of fact, what I have experienced in this video, it was really hard to tell the difference, period. This was 50% nerve wracking, 50% fascinating so i hope you guys enjoy this this was something new testing popular conspiracy theories that kind of relate to food i can truly see this being a series because we've never done anything like that we've talked about conspiracy theories related to food but we never actually went and got the ingredients and tested it out and see the results for ourselves and boy did we see the results for ourselves <laughs> give the video a like if you think this should be a series i personally think this should be a series let me know what you guys think don't forget to subscribe and switch my notifications before you go so if i do turn this into a series you will be notified about that i love you guys i hope you enjoy this and Crumble, I love your cookies. I really do. They're the best cookies in the world. This is just for fun. This is just my opinion. This is just allegedly. My legs are still shaking, by the way. So, nothing has changed. <laughs> I love you guys, and I will see you on my next video. Bye-bye.